All right, friends, it's T, and I'm back with a new video, man, educational video, kind of a QA, and a I guess you could call this, because people keep asking me about this, you know, the muscle damage stuff, whatever, training, yada, 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 yada. So, uh, yeah, you know, I popped this up, and I, I, I was talking in a video, and I brought this up, so I put it in the community section. I'll talk about it now, because some pi people always ask me, can you talk about those things that you pop up, or I'm going to do it now. So this is from this is from NCBI or Frontiers in Physiology. It's all it's also it's also man, it's it's an NCBI, okay? I gotta bring it up too. Whatever, they're both the same. Anyway, they, it's a copy of the same thing, anyways. Attenuation of eccentric exercise induced muscle damage. That is a type of training, okay? Confirmed by maximal iso isometric contractions, a mini review. It's a mini review, okay? So there's a section like this in there, okay? Um, I'm, you know what? I'm just going to bring it up from the website. It's in this section. Frontiers Physiology. So if you scroll down here, they always highlight it somewhere over here. Here it is. But before I go there, let me talk about the top part, okay? So... In abstract, they tell you, although beneficial in detrimental context, exercise, eccentric exercise induced muscle damage, yes, EIMD, might be unwanted during training regime, regimens, uh, competitions, and daily activities. Why? Why don't you want to get damage there? Because you'll lose in the event, and you may get a more cat catastrophic injury if you continue doing continue competing that's what could happen to you okay so you don't want to get damaged there the whole point of the adaptation process is to repair and remodel you a lot stronger so you do not get damaged it builds muscle to make you stronger so you do not get damaged with a repeated bout of exercise yes but if you're unaccustomed to if you did something in that training regime or that competition that you may not have done like maybe you ran a little bit faster you did something an unaccustomed bout of something you're going to get damaged and and it happens to strong men it happens to a lot of people and then they're out of the competition it fucks them after they're screwed they're completely screwed okay i've seen people literally bodybuilders they are like dieting heavily and they'll like flex and they'll literally rip they'll rip tear muscle just from flexing it's it's crazy you don't want that but anyway, okay, so that is some of the problems. Okay, there is a vast number of studies investigating strategies to attenuate EIMD response after damaging exercise bouts. Yeah, it's really easy. Just do things that you're unaccustomed to that you would not do in that competition. It's really simple. Do everything there so you don't get any, so you don't get any damage, so you don't build any muscle. Okay, don't get damaged so you don't build any muscle. <laughs> that, because the damage builds muscle, but you don't want to get damaged because you want to do well in your, your event. So maybe do things that you're unaccustomed to doing, and then it'll build some muscle, make you stronger. Then you won't get damaged at the event, okay? You'll be adapted now. You'll be adapted to your exercise. There'll be no more damage, okay, dude? It's really simple. That's why they tell you here, yeah, I'm the response to damaging exercise bouts. Many of them consist of performing exercises that induce EIMD. Yeah, do exercise that induce EIMD. Exercise induce muscle damage, get it? consuming supplements or using equipment that are not accessible for most people mm, yeah whatever the gym this that whatever you're doing i don't know downhill running or something okay just do a lot of something it appears that perform just do unaccustomed bouts untrained unfamiliar whatever bouts okay it appears that performing maximal isometric contractions two to four days prior to damaging bouts promotes significant attenuation of eimd symptoms that are not related to muscle function yeah okay it has been shown that the volume of isomuscle length in which they are performed, interval between da 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 da, whatever. In addition, this appears to have protection, is not long lived, uh, lasting no longer than four days. Oh, well, whatever. Although on not particular mechanism, these adaptations were identified. Okay, professional should consider applying this non damaging stimulus before submitting their uh, patients to unaccustomed exercise. Yeah, you should do that. Yeah. Because that's what gets damaged, unaccustomed exercise, known to cause widespread muscle damage, whatever. However, it seems not to be the best option for athletes or relatively trained individuals. Well, it depends, man. You have to have a very good coach that understands this. Future studies uh, should focus on establishing ICO protection, other populations, trained individuals, or muscle groups. Yeah, extensors against EIND as well as investigate different mechanisms. Well, if you don't want to build any muscle, then don't get damaged. Okay, dude? It's really simple. 
So um, induced exercise induced muscle damage (EIMD) is a multifactorial phenomenon that occurs when skeletal muscle ex is exposed to what? Elevated mechanical stress conferred by unaccustomed eccentric exercise. Yeah, definitely, I would agree. But also, when the intensity, if you're a trained athlete, the intensity and duration of that exercise can also induce muscle damage. But that too, you would be, a, you would be kind of unaccustomed. I don't know. You could call it that. Not necessarily. You may be accustomed to doing these same exercises. You may be accustomed, but you came back and you did it again. But the intensity, it's, your, it's the intensity and the, the duration of that exercise will bring back this damage, okay? It's complicated. Um, okay, so the exposure to stress, uh, to, to stress leads to cellular disruption, loss of function, soreness, and leakage of intercellular proteins to the blood, which, of course, intercellular protein in will increase the cells, the cell count. Yeah, it's a whole thing that's happening there. Although eiodine plays an important role in neuromuscular development, it does play a huge role in neuromuscular development. Some of its symptoms may uh, accurately affect performance. So yeah, it does. You don't want to, if you're performing, you don't want to get damaged. It's really simple. Okay. So there's a whole bunch of other stuff here. I'm not going to go into the whole thing. Uh, performing the initial uh, uh, damaging bout after which the neuromuscular system recovers and becomes less susceptible to EIMD. How does it recover? It repairs and remodels a lot stronger. Okay, dude, now it's resistant for further assault. This phenomenon is known as the repeated bout effect. Yes, 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 yes. However, the manifestation of elevated magnitude EIMD seems not to be necessary for the protection to occur. Um, it, I... Yeah, it does. Okay, I don't know. It's I don't know. I can't go into the whole thing. They're gonna explain more about it. Okay, a few do, a few days before damaging bouts, yada yada. They're gonna explain why the strategy gains scientific uh, attention to performing maximal isometric contractions. Our one protective strategy to protect you from getting this damage is to do these things and whatever. A bunch of stuff. Exercise induced muscle damage and the repeated bout effect. The breakdown of ultra uh, ultra structural components of the muscle induced by unaccustomed eccentric exercise is referred to e as EIMD. Yeah, exercise induced muscle damage. That's a training. This phenomenon has been widely studied in an effort to understand the ben the beneficial and detrimental effects. Well, it has beneficial as detrimental depends. If you're in an event, you don't definitely don't want that. So it's been commonly reported EIMD symptoms loss of Function, edema, soreness, stiffness, and leakage of okay, blah. Compared to isometric contractions, eccentric contractions are known to cause significant greater magnitudes of damage. Definitely, because the load and you going with gravity and pulling your muscle will cause this damage. Okay, dude? Not in the opposite direction. There's nothing pulling, pulling, uh, stretching and pulling the muscle fiber and nothing dragging it down. So if you're going in the up force, the, the concent concentric contraction... There's nothing going on up there. There's nothing really going on up there, whatever. Uh, although, a, although eccentric contractions produce greater strength levels when compared to other contractions, fewer motor units are recruited during, during them. Yeah, I will explain this. Eccentric contractions produce greater strength levels. How does it do that? Because it causes a damage to the muscle and then it repairs and remodels a lot stronger. Then therefore there's more motor units when you come back there's more androgen receptors, more motor units. I'll explain this in one second, okay? Let me go down here in the bottom. They're going to explain what you get, these three stages, what makes you, what is so beneficial of this, making you greater strength and all that kind of stuff, okay? It'll explain to you why. Let me get there. I'm almost there. So, okay, let me, let me go down there. I'm not going to, fuck this, man. I'm not going to read all this shit. So here it is. This section right here explains to you. It has been reported that a second damaging bout does not elicit EIMD symptoms to the same extent after recovery from a first identical bout. Listen to what they said. From a first identical bout, this attenuated response has been attributed to a phenomenon often referred to as repeated bout effect phenomenon. Okay. Although many studies focus on discovering the the mechanisms responsible for the RBE, they are yet to be fully determined. Well, there's a lot of stuff going on there. They shift into type 1, and then they are starting to go through a repair and a remodeling, and that's it. And then whatever. There's many things that's protecting from this damage so you don't get rhabdo and die. Because you may come into the gym like an idiot and start lifting with damaged muscles, which is stupid. 
Um, in an effort to understand the RBE, reviewed the literature uh, on the, res re uh, the possible mechanisms of the phenomena and uh, divided them into three groups. Okay, so here's, here's where, where this so-called strength and everything comes in. You lifting a heavy weight adapted, you're definitely getting, getting some what we would call neural strength and androgen receptor chemical strength. I call that chemical strength. You're adapting to the weights a chemical strength. But you can build muscle and get chemical strength and a bunch of other strength, get real strength, okay? So these are the three groups. The three groups are neural, right there, neural, mechanical, and cellular adaptations. So with uh, eccentric bouts of, of unaccustomed exercises, uh, whatever, damaging exercises, exercise-induced muscle damage training, you're going to get neural, mechanical, and cellular adaptations. So you're going to get neural, neural adaptations, mechanical adaptations, and cellular adaptations. However, if you're adapted to lifting a heavy weight in the gym, you're just getting neural adaptations. You're not particularly getting mechanical, I would say, and not cellular, definitely not cellular adaptations. Cellular adaptations only happen in exercise-induced muscle damage. See what I mean? You may get some neural there, but that neural is kind of, I don't know how to explain this. You're not really, you haven't built any more fibers, so there's nowhere for them to attach. You can get new motor units. You can get additional motor units with the new muscle fibers and the new muscle mass that you're, you're growing from the, the, the nuclei that are being deposited there by the satellite cell in exercise-induced muscle damage. That's the only way to get them. They synthesize protein, they further that myonuclear domain, and then you can get bigger and stronger all the time through these, through these neuromuscular adaptations. Get it, broski? Yeah, okay. So the, study, the, the, the studies that proposed neural adaptations showed that greater numbers of slow-twitch fibers are recruited during eccentric contractions following an initial damaging bout. Well, yeah, I would... I would say they could be recruited, but they hide in there later, protect you from any more damage. <laughs> I don't know, but definitely fast twitch are being, are being recruited because you're damaging a lot of fast twitch muscle fibers. It's complicated. So following an initial damaging, and then they're, they're talking about being recruited, eccentric contractions following an initial damaging bout. Yeah, okay, whatever. Moreover, motor units are recruited in a more synchronized fashion. As for mechanical adaptations, augmented muscular stiffness has been reported after recovery from initial damage. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. As well as increases in connective tissue. You're, you're going to get more connective tissue, definitely. You're not going to get it by lifting a heavy weight, being adapted. And total decimine, a, structure, a structural protein responsible for myofibular alignment, content, whatever. Finally, studies that investigate cellular adaptations, cellular adaptations, found increased numbers in, ser in serial sarcomeres. Yeah, you're not going to get that lifting a heavy weight. You're not going to get, you're not going to get any cellular adaptations in lifting a heavy weight because you're adapted. So you're only going to get them in EIMD training. That is a separate kind of fucking training. Do you get it? You understand, man? All right. So you get these, these, these sarcomeres in parallel, in series, whatever, in myofibril myofibrils. Strengthening of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Yeah, definitely. I would agree. The strengthening of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. You definitely, the sarcoplasmic reticulum, that it's, you're going to get, there's, it, there's going to get some there too as well. There's things happening there. And altered expression of mediators of inflammation. Oh, yeah, okay. Although important to detrimental situations, the protect protection provided by the RBE might be contradicted in given context since it requires initial damage to occur. It does need damage to occur to get those things going. Yes, I would agree. Hello, da. In some competitive contexts, severe EIMD is usually avoided. Severe. Well, I'm not trying to avoid severe IMD because I want severe so then I can grow muscles. That's, I'm a bodybuilder. I, I want exercise induced muscle damage because I want to build, I want to get bigger and stronger. That's the whole goal, really. And it can happen very quickly within just a few months. You, you, you don't have to be there 10 years being a lifting slave. You can do this in a couple of months. 
It's really easy. So uh, is usually avoided since it can compromise training sessions. Well, I'm, I'm not training. I'm not going to the gym to try to train to be good at being a lifting slave. Get it? I'm going there. I'm going there to damage muscles, to grow them bigger and stronger. So I have actually something real. I don't want to create anything artificial or fake. I don't want to create fake artificial chemical strength. You understand me? And I don't want to create artificial fake sarcoplasmic muscles either, hypertrophying them through the sarcoplasm, being adapted. I don't want to go in the gym and be adapted. I want to go there and get fucking adaptations and exercise-induced muscle damage. That's how you get adaptations, like it said in fucking here. So AIMD can compromise uh, adherence to physical activity programs because of soreness. Yeah, it could. What? So you're going to get sore if you get damaged, right? I thought soreness has nothing to do with damage. Remember, they tell you all over the internet because they're fooling you, man. They're playing with your brain because they're just fucking brainwashing you. People are brainwashed out there. In other words, submitting an individual to elevated levels of EIMD in order to protect him or her against a later might not... Uh, in later might not always be the best options well i don't know i don't know it depends what you're doing there therefore protective strategy strategies strategies that induce no eind should be considered well yeah i would guess so if you're you don't want to get it in a fucking uh train uh, in a match where you're competing hello maximal isometric contractions and prevention strategy so now they're trying to tell you how to prevent from growing muscles uh, to get an adaptation that's a really great that's a good one okay whatever i know how to do it just be adapted and you won't get it a lot of people are not getting it anyways don't worry very few people ever get this damage to ever come back very few people because they don't understand the concept of it outcomes are expressed as mean values obtained immediately one to three days after the damaging and yeah i would believe i would say that yeah one to three days after the damaging and preconditioning bouts then there's preconditioning bouts People precondition themselves so they don't get any more damage. That's you guys all going to the gym. You're all preconditioned. <laughs> In parentheses, uh, percentages of protection are expressed compared to the control group. To calculate the percentage of protection, absolute values in control group, whatever, 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 whatever. Who cares? To our knowledge, the first study investigates the effects of preconditioning to IMD. Okay, they want to precondition themselves. They don't want any damage. Okay, dude. So there's not really much there to tell you. It was those three things I wanted to tell you what, they're, what it, this is associated with, th those three things. Uh, less exposure to EIMD. Onset of EIMD, low exposure. There you go. Notice this curve, this curb. Yeah. Protection, EIMD, attenuation. See, I notice it goes up and then it attenuates. You want to see where it attenuates? I can show you in a real map where it attenuates from, from another thing from NCBI. Between the number of maximal isometric contractions, attenuation of exercise-induced muscle damage, EOID, and duration of the conferred protection according to whatever the duration. Here, notice how they tell you untrained. The groups are not frequently exposed to EIMD. Untrained or upper, upper limb muscles might benefit from the protective effect conferred by ISO without the manifestation of EIMD. Untrained. What's a unique feature of untrained muscles? They get stiff and sore the next day due to what muscle damage? An NCBI um, nuclei overdose precedes hypertrophy and not lost on detraining, that map. Untrained first training satellite cell fusion hypertrophy. Get it, dude? Untrained. <laughs> yeah. They get damaged. They definitely do. Yes, based on whatever X, or, uh, whatever eccentric contractions. Uh, I don't know what else to talk about here. I think that that was that was basically it. The first part's really, the first part's more is really important. They they know pretty much everything about muscle damage, man. They know it builds muscles. Look. The, the, the creatine kinase activity and soreness over a three-day period following the preconditioned activity. So I would say three days, definitely. If you're really a trained athlete, it won't go more than three days sometimes. Four, maybe the max four. So I would say three to four days. After that, there's no more, there's no more soreness. There's no more nothing going on there. You should be fine after that. Following the preconditioned activity, the damaging bouts. Okay, based on evidence these studies, it seems reasonable to assume that the most potent ISO protocols might confirm protection levels as great as those conferred, okay, without eliciting the IMD. Uh, possible, let's go, okay, mechanisms, yeah. 
Stress, damage in rats, I don't know. Uh, inflammatory mm -hmm. protection. Yeah, I don't know what else to talk about here. Result, result of neural adaptation such at optimize and activation of agonist and agonist motor units. Yeah, it does, it does too. It does the same thing and, and so does concentric. It activates motor units. It does a bunch of things, yeah. Three days later, activation, three days later, um, force produced. Let me see what they say here. More importantly, uh, simultaneous increase in agonist force production and activation three days later. What did they say here? Result of decrease activation agonist muscles. Three, performing three sets of five maximal isometric contractions resulted in decreased activation of agonist muscles and more importantly, a stimula stimulus increase in agonist force production and activation three days later. Yeah, yeah, this activation of a greater number of motor units in the eccentrically exercised muscle can result in dividing the tension within more muscle fibers, which could attenuate EIMD. Yeah, it could. Um, overall protection converted by so it might be, uh, okay, whatever. Uh, um, that do not require previous damage. Okay, whatever. They're, just, they're trying to tell you how not to get it. They don't want you building muscle. Get strong. Society's scared of you. They don't want you to know the secret how to build muscle. They don't want you to get big and strong because um, you would be a menace to society. That's why. Stero they're not scared of steroid people because they know they're weak. Preconditioning activity is also because they're not muscularly strong. They've just got a force production and they're fat because they're carrying sarcoplasmic. Preconditioning activity is also efficient in trained populations or other muscle groups. Yeah, they want you to be preconditioned. They don't want you to, to, be, to, to get this damage. Preconditioned groups of untrained people, considering that muscle groups that frequently perform eccentric contractions are highly exposed to EIMD, definitely. Presented elevated levels of protection against EIMD, okay. They don't promote you to get muscle damage. They don't want you to get muscle damage. They don't want you to build muscles. <laughs> Conclusion, considering applying, okay, da, 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 whatever. This is interesting. Uh, eliciting, promote protection without eliciting EIMD in untrained populations. Okay, additionally, the stimulation to damaging bout interval should not exceed four days. In fact, a two-day interval might be ideal. Also, it should be performed a long muscle length in order to confirm protection. Finally, it is important to consider that protection conferred by ISO will play a confounding role during the assessment of EIMD markers. Okay, sure, 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 whatever, conflict of interest. So this was an interesting report, man. This kind of, this map here is, is Kind of tells you high exposure to EMD, onset of EIMD, high exposure right there at the bottom, boom. Onset of EIMD, low exposure, low exposure, whatever. High and low, okay, whatever. Yeah. Anyways, I talked about this. That's all I have to say in that, man. I'm going to go tell me what you think about that, friends. Like, subscribe, support the channel. I'll see you in the next video, Monski. Yeah. I hope that helped, man. I don't know what else to say there, dude. So... You get, you get neural drive, you get cellular adaptations, mechanical, you get these three, you get all three of the three of these adaptations in one, in one bout called exercise induced muscle damage, but you do not get all three of these in sarcoplasmic training or being adapted to lifting heavy weights. You don't get it going to the gym frequently as an endurance athlete. EIND training is not based on endurance training, going to the gym often. It's based on going there uh, periodically, not frequently, okay? And it's not based on going frequently to the gym and getting good at lifting a heavy weight. It's based on uh, cellular adaptations, which are, it's based, the training is based on going there periodically, not consistently. That's the difference. So if you go periodically, you'll get all three in one. But if you go there consistently, then you'll get, you won't get all three of these. You'll get, you'll get some fake, you'll get some glycogen and you'll get good at lifting that heavy weight. Okay. Like a lifting, nice little lifting slave, a comfortable lifting slave in the factory. I'll see you in the next one, friends. Ciao. I hope that helped, man.